So we've seen that as we move a conducting loop towards a magnet, a current is induced in the loop and the current flows in a direction such that the induced magnetic field opposes the change that induces it. Now if instead of moving the loop, we think about moving a magnet towards the loop with the same relative velocity, we've got the same change in the magnetic flux through the loop. And so we actually get an induced current, which is the same as when we were moving the loop towards the magnet. However, let's have a think about what can be causing that current. Because the current starts because there is a force on the electrons, which starts the electrons moving. So when we were moving the loop towards the current, the force was given by the magnetic force, F is equal to QV cross B, because the electrons had a velocity through the magnetic field from the magnet. However, if the loop is stationary, then there can't be any velocity on the electrons. They're initially stationary. So what can be starting that induced current? Well, it turns out that the only force that could be causing the electrons to move in this case is the electric force. So this tells us that when we move a magnet towards a conducting loop, we must be inducing an electric field. So this tells us that a changing magnetic flux must be accompanied by an electric field. So let's consider what this electric field is going to look like. Let's consider a magnetic field which is going into the screen and is increasing. And let's place a loop into that magnetic field. Now, in this case, because that field is increasing, we know that we must have an induced current which is creating a field in the opposite direction. So a magnetic field coming out of the screen. So in order to do that, we're going to need to have a current which is flowing in an anti-clockwise direction around our loop. So what electric field is going to get charged particles, positively charged particles, to flow in that anti-clockwise direction? Well, it's going to have to be an electric field which is looping around in that anti-clockwise direction. And so this tells us that a changing magnetic field induces electric fields which form loops. Let's now derive an expression for the size of that electric field which is induced. So in order to do that, we'll need to consider, well, how much work do we need to do on a charged particle to move it around the loop? So we can write that the work is equal to the integral from our initial plate position to our final position of the electric force dot dl, where dl is the path that we're taking between our initial point, which we can call a, and our final point, which we can call b. And so because this is an electric force, we can write that this is equal to q times the integral from a to b of e dot dl. Now I know this looks the same as the equation for electrostatic work. However, it's not the equation for electrostatic work because we're now not considering an electrostatic field. We're not considering a field which has come from a charged particle. Rather, we're considering the field which is induced by the changing magnetic flux. So even though they look the same, they're not quite the same thing. So if we consider moving a charged particle once around the loop, the work that needs to be done is given by Q times the integral around the closed loop of E dot dl. Now we know that there is a relationship between the work and the voltage or EMF induced in a loop. So the voltage is equal to the work per unit charge. So we can write, well, the EMF is going to be equal to W over Q, and this is equal to the integral around the closed loop of E dot dl. And Faraday's law tells us that this EMF is given by minus d phi b dt. So this is another way of writing Faraday's law. We can say that the electric field induced around a closed path E dot, the integral of E dot dl is equal to minus d phi b dt. 
So that lets us calculate the strength of the electric field which is induced by changing a magnetic flux. So let's have a look at a problem that we can solve using this now. So this problem is a long solenoid has n turns per unit length and a radius capital R. A varying current described by I is equal to I0 cos omega t flows through the solenoid. Part A, determine the magnitude of the induced electric field outside the solenoid, a distance little r is greater than capital R from its long central axis. And part B, what is the magnitude of the induced electric field inside the solenoid, a distance little r from its axis. Okay, so to do part A, let's start by drawing a diagram. We'll draw a cross section of the solenoid. So here's the solenoid with a radius capital R, and we're considering the electric field a distance little r. So this is little r, which is confusingly bigger than big R from the center of that solenoid. So we know that inside the solenoid in here, the magnetic field is given by mu naught ni. And so this will be varying with time given by mu naught ni0 cos omega t. And then in the region between the solenoid and where we're measuring the electric field, there is no magnetic field. So B is equal to zero here. So because there's no magnetic field in this region, there's no magnetic flux. And so we're trying to work out the electric field induced. And so we'll use Faraday's law E dot DL is equal to minus D phi B DT. And we can make the assumption that the electric field will be constant around this loop here, which would make sense due to symmetry. It would be very strange if that wasn't true. And so we can use the fact that it's constant around that loop to pull the electric field out the front of the integral. And as we argued in the video, the electric field will form loops. So we'll assume that E and DL are parallel. So we've now got the electric field times the integral of DL. And in this case, when we go once around the loop, we're going around the circumference of this circle. So this is E times 2 pi R. And we've said that is equal to minus D phi B DT. And phi B is the magnetic flux here. So in this outer region, we've said there is zero flux. So there's only a flux through the inner region here. And so that will be given by the area of that inner region, which is pi capital R squared, and then times the magnetic field mu naught n i zero cos omega t. And we're taking the derivative of that with respect to t. So this tells us that 2 pi r e is equal to, when we differentiate this, let's pull all the constants out the front. So we've got pi r squared mu naught n i zero, and then we're just differentiating cos omega t with respect to t. So when we do that, we get minus omega sine omega t. And what we're trying to find is the electric field. So we can cancel out these pi's to simplify it a little bit. And then we've got that our electric field is equal to the negative signs also cancel out. So we end up with r squared mu naught n i naught omega sine omega t. And we divide by 2r. So that's our expression for part A. And now for part B, we're now considering a loop inside here. So still with radius little r, except that the magnetic flux is going to be different now because we'll have less field lines cutting through this loop here. So we can say, do it the same way, E dot DL. And then because of symmetry, it makes sense that the electric field would have the same value around every part of this loop. And so we can pull the electric field out the front and using the fact that the electric field lines and DL 
are parallel, we've just got um, times the integral around the loop of dl, which is again 2 pi r. And now this is equal to minus d. Now in this case, the magnetic flux in there is going to be the area, which is pi little r squared now, times the magnetic field, which is mu naught n i naught cos omega t dt. And so, and so we can solve this the same way as above. We've got e times 2 pi r is equal to minus, let's pull the constants out the front, pi r squared mu naught n i naught. And then when we differentiate cos omega t, we get minus omega sine omega t. And so the pi's will cancel out. One of the r's will cancel out in this case. And so we have E is equal to, we've got this factor of 2, so we need to divide by that. And the negatives cancel out. So we've got a half R mu naught N I naught omega sine omega T. So that's an expression for the electric field, which is induced inside that solenoid.